Well, hello, good people. What's going on? Hi, hello, hi. Let me back. Let, let girl, you look good. Want you back that thing up? Use a firm. Want you back that thing up? I'm lit today. Um, but I'm also sad that I lost my glass. <laughs> I lost my sunglasses, and they prescribed, so I gotta find them. Uh, what you doing? What? What's what? okay? <clears throat> so. Listen, today was a good day. <laughs> I am excited, y'all. Like, I am really excited. Um, I'm as I go get my Starbucks and Chick fil A fix before meetings and work and all that. I came to y'all today on this good uh Tuesday for a testimony. And I figured, well, you know, you got to go to the to the Starbucks, so why don't you just talk to the people in the car? And so, let me tell y'all how good God is. Let me tell y'all how good, because I feel like y'all already know, but I'm going to tell y'all anyway. Um, Just like I always do. And before I do that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hmm? Y'all go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Play them videos all the way through. We almost to the goal. Okay, the goal is a thousand hours by the end of November, so I need y'all to watch all them videos, play them things through. Don't be trying to cut it off. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just let it play. Just let it play. And I, you know, in the middle of my testimony, may have a little road rage, but that's okay because the Lord know my heart. But okay, so y'all remember I posted a YouTube video about my depression, right? It was a very dark time for me. It was a very hard time for me. Um, as I stated in the video, and if you have not seen that video, I suggest you go back and watch that video, and this video will make more sense to you. Um, so I was dealing with depression really bad, and it's like everything just kept happening. Like nothing was going right. Like I, I didn't want to do anything. It was hard with just life period, especially like from the entrepreneur aspect y'all know y'all been with me on my full-time entrepreneurship journey and it was like i didn't save like i was prepared i'm a hustler so that that work was gonna get put in regardless but i didn't have the adequate funds i needed in order to get the business where i wanted it to be uh and that goes for evans financial solutions and victorian publishing <clears throat> so it became, and you know, full-time entrepreneur mean, okay, I depend on my businesses to pay my bills. So it became very stressful. Um, you know, I ended up even working at Smoothie King, trying to come up with a solution. And I left there, it just, it wasn't for me. So it was a dark time. It was a time of confusion. It was a time of sadness. It was a time of stress. It was a very hard time for me. And it's like things just kept happening one after another. The car accident happened and, you know, other issues that, again, you know, I said I'm not ready to talk about yet, but I will. Um, and I remember telling Christian, you know, because she watched me go through it. It's very few people in my life who knew, but she watched me go through it. And I told her, I said, bruh, I said something big coming something big is coming and i'm on this bumpy street y'all so you know i might shake a little bit but i always know and i always keep this mentality and I, I recommend everybody keep this mentality too when life gets hard if you're a believer i need you to remember one thing when you're in the middle of a storm know that there's a rainbow on the other side you go through things as tests because I just told a friend this earlier. I said, God is going to test your faith. He's going to test you before he can give you blessings. He needs to see where your mind is. Are you going to keep the faith in the midst of your battles? Or are you going to give up? And one thing that I told y'all in the video, I don't care what happened, my faith never wavers. I can be in the deepest, darkest of moods, but my faith, I stand on it. it. It never wavers because in every day, all day, God, I have faith. I'm keeping my faith because I know from experience that when you're going through something dark like I did or like I have in the past, there's something big coming. The Lord is preparing you for something. 
and you're it's hard to see it when you're in the storm but I promise you, if you keep that mentality and you say to yourself, just like I said over and over, to Christian, to myself, anybody, it's something big coming. I don't know what it is. I don't know what form is coming in. I just know there is something big that is coming. So, for one, my blessing is I was able to get a new car without having to spend any money. You know, luckily my car was valued at a high price. So therefore I was able to not only pay off the loan, but get money back in order to give me a new car. When I got this car, my credit score, when I got the last car, my credit score was a, was significantly high. So my interest rate was low, but I was upside down on the car before that. So it made my, my car note a little bit higher. When I got this car, I'm not upside down, don't have negative equity, but my credit score is not as high. So I'm going in thinking, oh hell, I'm about to get a 20% interest rate. They finna kick my ass on the on the payments, all kind of stuff. But I was like, you know what? I ain't gonna worry about it. I need a car. This the one I want. We're gonna see what they're talking about. Baby, when I tell you my car note is a hundred dollars cheaper than it was in my last car. hundred dollars cheaper i was thinking i was finna get and me and my mom was in there i'm thinking i'm finna they finna at least hit me with a 13 percent interest rate because your interest rate depends a lot on your credit score and then also i'm in a lot of debt so my debt is what keeps me from having to get things because i'm in so much debt my debt to income ratio is extremely high and if you know anything about debt to income ratios you know when you have high debt it's hard for you to get approved for stuff <clears throat> aside from the credit score but also when you have high debt, it lowers your credit score. So I told myself, and I got therapy at three. So I told myself, it's gonna be at least a 13% interest rate. Me and mom was sitting there talking about it. Again, when it comes to employment, most dealerships expect you to prove your employment. I'm self-employed. So it's not easy for me to, you know, just come up with the amount that y'all looking for there's ways around it but it's not easy for me to just say oh i make this much and then have to prove it but with bigger dealerships usually you just write it on the paper and then that's it but if you go to a smaller independent car lot they're gonna ask for forms and stuff so i'm like all right <clears throat> so i go in there expecting 13 percent interest rate but i told them my car note cannot be higher than this amount which was the amount of my last car note. And so when the man pulled it up, the car note was, man, fuck it. I, we transparent. We, I, I can talk numbers. I don't care. For my last car note was four fifty five a month. So I'm like, I can't go over four fifty five. If I, I really don't want to go over four hundred. But me again, keeping in mind my my credit score. So we get in there. That man say, okay, here's your monthly payment. Here's your interest rate. My interest rate was 7%. My car note was 370. When I tell you, me and my mama both looked at that and said, oh shit, like at the same time, because when I seen that 370 and that interest rate, I was like, oh, look at God. So not only am I getting a lower car note with a decent interest rate, because my last interest rate was like 5%. So, uh-uh, why y'all crowded? I don't like that. Get off my ass, lady. I'm sitting here trying to record my video and you over here hating. Um, but my last one was 5%. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, shit. I'm good then. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm good. Like, oh, but God, listen. What? What? Blessing number one. So now to get into the bigger blessing, which I am going to have to pause y'all real quick because I got to run in the stove. So I'll be back for the even bigger blessing. Come on. Woo! Won't he do it? Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'm back. I got to get used to not having a push to start because I tend to put my keys in my purse. <laughs> I got to get used to that whole thing. 
um, seat belts, everyone. Put your seatbelt on. I learned the hard way. Um, so, let me make sure this radio light can come on. So, that's blessing number one. Blessing number two. Put it back up real quick, y'all. Because y'all know uh, Mickey. Bitch, if you don't back your ass up, quit playing with me. Because Mickey be on that bullshit. I don't learn how to whip this thing. <laughs> Loud, ta-da, watch out now. It's the little one, and it's not Bow Wow. Um, okay, so, blessing number two. <clears throat> Y'all know they have a lot of COVID uh, business resources and grants and stuff out there. I applied, and I want to say, I actually recorded a video on this, but I don't think I ever posted it about how upset I was with the SBA when I applied for my grant because... I have two legitimate businesses with paperwork, accounting, everything you could possibly think of. I got tax documents. First of all, I'm an accountant, so y'all know my shit is together. And I didn't get the loan because I applied after all the bullshit and the fuckery happened. And so they didn't they didn't approve me with them. They didn't approve me for the, the loan, the grant, none of that. So I was a little upset. And it, it was like I was upset because it wasn't fair that people were getting this money who didn't have actual businesses and, and put in work and it's their life. Like, I put my life into this. Like, I really suffered, not only because of COVID, just because I'm a small business owner that's a black woman. I suffer every day going up against this world. So, I was, I was hot. I was hot for that reason. But, I let it go. I, re, I re, did a reevaluation. They denied me again. And my cousin, you know, everybody was hot. They was pissed because it's not fair. So my cousin was like, well, you going to try again? You gonna? I was like, nah. I said, bro, just forget it. Like, you know, don't worry about it. The, the money going to come. The money going to come. And this was earlier this year. So <clears throat> remember when I started to become a full-time entrepreneur, the issue was I didn't have the adequate funds to be able to do that. So... I stepped out on faith. I stepped out on faith knowing that all I had was the clients that I have, enough to pay my bills, but the debt, again, was the issue. But I was doing what I loved. And y'all have also, again, follow the, watch the YouTube videos because I, I put the journey on there. I'm very transparent. Anything you see that say transparent blog, that's me telling y'all exactly what I'm going through. So... I want to say in October, Harris County released a grant for small businesses, right? And so, mind you, I'm applying for grants, applying for grants, applying for grants. That's part of being a business owner. And it's like you have this positivity, you have this faith. But at the end of the day, I also know I'm a black businesswoman in America. But this grant was, the preference was black women entrepreneurs, so, because they gave preference to black-owned and women-owned. So, I said, okay, it don't hurt to apply. With, with TTM, I apply for grants and sponsorships all day for the past five years. If they say no, they say no. Like, I, they said no. Try again. Do another one. Don't quit. And so, I applied for the grant, and I'm like, okay, you know, I just prayed. I said, Lord, let me, you know, let me just get this grant because I know what I'm going to do with the grant. I know that I'm going to put that grant into my business. I know what my business needs. The number one thing that my business does need is marketing. But I was unable to afford proper marketing. So that's where my downfall was. And if you don't have marketing, it's hard for you to push a business. So, you know, I do my applications. And because of who I am, when I do my applications, I'm very detailed. I give you a whole damn pie graph chart forecast everything on how the money will be spent break down all that and then i'm gonna add a little bit of testimony sprinkle on that thing so and i'm gonna park in this handicap and they can kiss all my ass um so i did that with the harris county grant any other grant i apply for hold on need y'all hold on one more second i know i know it's getting good it's getting good um but i gotta go get my starbucks real quick so be back Okay, I'm back. Had to get my drink. I don't know how I forgot I had therapy at 3, y'all. It's 2.45. Uh, it's virtual, but I'm trying to get my ass home. Because I don't want to therapy and drive. But I'm so hungry. I got to make it to Chick-fil-A. 
I'm just gonna be a little late. Um, <clears throat> all right, what you doing? So, I applied for the Harris County business grant, you know, and I pray. I said, God, just I just need look, I don't care, I don't care how much it is because it was a range of money. I don't care how much, just just give me a little something. Come on, baby. Um, and this was in October. Yeah, October. And they, you know, wasn't going to, I think, release or the, the winners or recipients or anything until, I want to say now. Usually when I apply for grants, I don't really track them. I track them in the beginning, make sure the application was received, make sure they don't need nothing else. But I don't really sit there and watch it like a hawk. For one, I don't have time. And for two, that's God's doing. <laughs> that's for him to watch. It ain't nothing I can do either. It's, I'm going to get it or I ain't. So... I wake up this morning I wake up this morning to an email and it was like a little DocuSign thing and it was like about a grant and I was like this gotta be spam like it was something about it that didn't look right so I you know I go to check the email addresses or whatever and I saw Harris County on it but again lately because there's been so much going on I had forgot which is even I love when I forget stuff and then it's like boom blessing. And so I forgot, and I look at the documents and stuff, because I sent it to Christian, and I was like, um... But then when I go to look at the documents, my dad just woke up, I was on the phone. And I saw the letter, the congratulations letter, <clears throat> you have received a Harris County Small Business Grant. Baby, when I tell you I jumped out the bed, the first thing I did was praise God. That's the first thing I do in anything. I jumped out the bed and I said, thank you, God. Like I was literally running around the house screaming and praising the Lord because didn't I tell y'all, hmm? cue memory, I said to Christian and to myself, something big is coming. I can feel it because the only time when every time I go through something like this, every time I go through a dark stage in my life, a down stage in my life, it's preparing me for something big that's coming. Because for one, the devil, when you doing what you're supposed to be doing, the devil gonna attack you either way. He don't want the, he not gonna attack the ones that ain't doing God's work. He not, he not worried about them. He gonna attack the ones that's doing God's work because he don't want God's work to be done. So that's who he gonna come after the hardest. And he comes after me hard. But listen, let me tell you. You got to get through this armor first. Do you understand me? I am not to be played with. I can be dark. I can be depressed. I can't. I'm a, I'm a human. We all go through it. Mental health is a thing. But what you not going to do is steal my faith. What you not going to do is tell me that God ain't real. What you not going to do is tell me not to believe. That's what you're not going to do. And that's where you're going to lose this battle. And the war. When I saw that grant, I, the first thing that came to my mind was I said something big was coming. Now, the amount don't matter. That ain't y'all business. But just know that it's enough to get me to where I need to get to. It's enough to, for one, give me marketing. Thank God. Because, baby, I need I need all that. <laughs> I need all that. A business ain't nothing without marketing. Um, that's the most important thing. Was it 249? Okay. And I just, it took me back. For one, like I said, y'all, I forget about stuff. And I actually like that I do that because that makes it even better when it's, un it's unexpected. It just pop up like, boom, blessing. Ha! Bet you forgot about that shit. Like, it just makes it so much better. And when I saw it, y'all, I just cried. I literally just, now you see me in this big ass truck and you gonna have your ass. I just cried because it's like, oh my God, I have been through hell and high water these past few months. And only thing I asked was to have the adequate money to be able to do what I wanted to do with my business. Hold on, y'all know I gotta order my Chick-fil-A. So, Cheryl, I forgot where I, well y'all I'm so excited. <laughs> glory but yeah so I got the grant this morning and I am just I'm so grateful 
and excited that I don't even know how to put it into words right now. But what I am going to tell y'all, and, and I'm going to end this off, but whether you a business owner or whether you just a person in general, whether you just, just being a human, I don't care what, what it is you're going through. I need y'all to understand that things are going to happen. Life is going to happen. Life was not meant to be easy. Life was meant to be hard. Again, that's why my favorite scripture is John 16, 33. In this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. God already told us that we were going to have trials and tribulation in, in life. It's a part of life. Life is not perfect. Life is meant to put you through things because it's the things that you go through. It's the tests that you go through that create those testimonies that are able to help not only you, but the people who are around you, the people who are listening to you. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I live on that. My life revolves around my testimonies. And that is the reason why I am so strong in my faith. It's because I've seen what God can do in my life. I was an abused kid. I was a raped teenager. My dad died from domestic violence. I was promiscuous. And to put it better, I was a hoe. As a teenager, men taking advantage of me. I done been through hell and back. But look where I am now. That is my testimony. That is why, and it's never, I never say, man, I wish I wouldn't have went through that or I regret this. If, and people always, like, you, you'll see the question, if you could change anything about your life, what would it be? Not a goddamn thing. I wouldn't change nothing about my life because it is every experience that I went through, whether it was bad or whether it was good, it was every single experience that I went through that got me to where I am today. Without those tests, without those experiences, without those bad things that happened to me, I would not be able to be sitting here talking to y'all and giving y'all a word, giving y'all a testimony, giving y'all positivity. Because God said, I got to put you through this so that when you grow up and when you get past it and when you heal, you can spread the word to my people because they out here hurting. Man, y'all better. I must have been a minister in my previous life because baby. I'm telling y'all right now, I don't know who watching this. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. But whatever it is you facing, I need you to understand one thing. <clears throat> First of all, ain't nobody going to be able to pull, out, pull it out of you except God. And let's say you watching this and you don't believe in God. That's fine. That's, that's, your, that's your prerogative. But I'm telling you what I know. And I'm telling you what works. You're not going to get out of it unless you give it to God. God because he will never leave you nor forsake you even when it feel like you can't hear his voice because I was in that place too I couldn't hear him I felt like he was not talking to me I felt like he was not here with me God where are you I can't hear you God had never left I left him he was there he was talking I just wasn't listening I wasn't listening my mind was clouded because again, the mind is the devil's playground. My mind was cloud cloudy. God never left me. He was always there. It was up to me to decide, are you going to listen to him? Are you going to find him? Are you going to understand that even in this time of darkness, he is going to pull you out just like he has in the past. And just like he will continue to do. You have to hold on to that. Hold on to that as tight as you can with every ounce of energy that you have. Because again, in the midst of it, it's hard to see. I struggled a lot. I kept my faith, but in other areas, I struggled. But what he's saying to you is, listen, my child, I can't give you a lot until I can see what you do with you. He wants to see what you can do with a little before he gives you a lot. He wants to test your faith to see when these storms and these trials and these tests come. Are you going to continue to believe in me and have faith? 
Or are you going to give up? Are you going to, God ain't real. God, I'm mad at you. God, I'm, and God know we be mad at him sometimes. You know, sometimes we be like, hey, 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 now. You tripping. Can you, <laughs> like, I'm mad. Hmm, I'm mad. Like, he knows that we be mad at him. But at the end of the day, are you going to trust him? Or are you going to give in? Are you going to let the devil win? Are you going to pass the test? Are you going to pass or are you going to fail? That's what God is trying to get over to you. And it's it's 3 o'clock, so I got to take the therapist until I'm running a little bit behind. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to do it while I'm driving. That's what's not going to happen. But you go... And I, y'all listen, baby, God is good. And you can't tell me he ain't. God is amazing. You can do anything you put your mind to. And you might not have the resources right now. You might not have the funds right now. You might not have a support system right now. You might not have whatever it is that you need to prosper. But what you do have if you go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe and watch my videos, what you do have is somebody that is motivating you and telling you from experience that you can do what you put your mind to. If it's resources you lacking, pray. God will provide those resources. And they may not come when you want them, want them to come, but they're going to come exactly on time when you need them to. They're going to come exactly on time when you need them to. Because it ain't, God, can I have this? God, can I have this? He ain't going to wake up. You ain't going to wake up tomorrow and have it. He ain't going to give it to you when you want it. He going to give it to you when he feels like it's time. He going to do it on his time. And his time is the best time. His time is the one that matters. Because he can give it to you right now. Let's say he give it to you tomorrow. What you going to do with it? You know what you going to do with it? Do you have a plan for what you're going to do with it? No. God is going to wait until the perfect time to give you what you need. He just did it to me. He had to pull me. I was, I'm out of the depression stage. He was pulling me out. He was like, hey, uh-uh. Bring it back. Run that back. He had to wait until I was ready to accept the blessings. And as soon as I changed my mindset, as soon as I came back to myself, my child is ready now. And the blessings came pouring in like no other. Like I said, sir, why do you have your... As I said, it started with the car. Lower, lower, lower car note. Insurance, still the same. Insurance ain't go up not... Matter of fact, it went down $5. Come on, Jesus. Y'all think I'm playing with y'all today and I'm not. Come on. Right at a time where I need these things for my business and I'm struggling. I'm like, okay, what is the plan? What do I do? What did I, you know what, God, you in control. You're going to be able to, you're going to, you're going to tell it. You're going to give me the, give me the resources that I need. I don't know when, but they coming. Woke up this morning. Bam, there it is. You ready? Man, y'all better. <laughs> Listen, look, y'all, I got to go to therapy, but as always, I love y'all. I hope this message helps somebody because one thing I pride myself on is every single time I am blessed with something, when I have a testimony, the first thing I do is grab a camera. Whether I, I used to do it on Facebook Live, if y'all go to my YouTube videos from way back when, y'all will see the journey that I went through, everything that I went through. It's always a testimony because the whole point of God blessing you and you having a testimony is so you can share with everybody else because he gets the glory. Give him the glory. It's for your good and his glory. You know what? Cut, cut it off. Cut it off. I love y'all. I just came to give y'all that word. Let's go be great. Bye.